good evening. It's uh, great to see you here this, tonight as we gather for work on this Sunday evening. Uh, we welcome those of you that are visitors tonight. We have some family members here of our choir. We have some friends who are part of the presbytery, and uh, we welcome all of you. We welcome Ralph Hawkins, who is our executive presbyter. Uh, we welcome Kathy uh, Montgomery, who is serving as our organist tonight, and we're so grateful to her for filling in and helping us out in this way. Uh, but we also welcome Reverend Larissa Kwong Abasia, who is serving as the vice moderator of the Presbyterian Church. And so she has been elected to serve for two years, and you'll have a further introduction uh, by Ralph of her later on. But we do welcome you to campus. This is her first time to New Wilmington, first time to Westminster College, uh, first time uh, introduction to Sticky Buns at uh, the Tavern. So her life is now complete. Friends, uh, a couple things happening this week as we continue to move through the Lenten season. Um, tomorrow morning's chapel speakers are a group of students who went to the Montreal Collegiate Conference this summer, and, or this summer, in January. And so they're going to be sharing a little bit of their journey, and if that's something that you, uh, if you know any of them and have an interest in that, or if you'd like to participate next year, it's a great time to come and be a part of it. Um, I'm sure I'll forget everyone, but Rachel Lemke is going to be one of our speakers, Sarah Helpin, uh, Olivia Martin, um, McKenna McCargy, who else? Emily Brun, there were some others, so they're all going to be part of worship tomorrow, so uh, we invite you to come back for that. Uh, as we gather this evening, uh, we do want to share greetings with one another, so I invite you to join me in the passing of the peace. You've heard the great news about being forgiven. So now show what that means to you, sharing the peace of Christ, the price that Christ gives you. Pass the peace to those surrounding you, because immeasurable love is not something that we keep to ourselves. So may the peace of Christ be with you. I invite you to uh, stand and greet one another.
First of all, um, I just want to take a second to thank Dr. Barbara and the Chamber Singers for being here tonight and sharing your wonderful gifts. Please join me in the call to worship. You came to us, word made flesh, to show us what it means to love. You came to us, word made flesh, to teach us how to serve. You came to us, now, holy wisdom, holy word. You came to us now, um, word made flesh, to clothe the naked and feed the hungry. Come to us now, holy wisdom, holy word. Show us, teach us, clothe us, feed us. pretend that we have it all together and haven't done anything wrong, we are delusional. We're not fooling God. But if we are honest and vulnerable, then God will be gracious and forgive us. Not only that, God will work on the inside to transform us so we might transform the world. As God's people, let us be honest about ourselves as we confess together. We bless you, holy God, with everything we have. We bless your holy name. Sins for which we can't forgive ourselves, sins for which others cannot forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, and show us how to forgive. 
Free us from the things that get in the way of our relationship with others, with ourselves, and with you. Cast out our sin and enter into our lives, that we might be your people, grounded in love, grace, humility, and peace. Amen. Everyone who is in Christ is a new creation. Through Christ, our relationship with God has been restored. Friends, believe the good news that comes from God. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please bow your heads and pray with me. Dear God, we are a community, Westminster College, New Wilmington, the Presbytery of Shenango, the Presbyterian Church, gathered to learn. May this moment be set aside to learn about you and your hopes for us as we hear your word read and proclaimed. Speak to us the dreams and lessons you have for us this day. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Mark chapter 7, verses 24 to 30. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an evil spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Yes, Lord, she replied, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home and found her child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. This is the word of the Lord.
to that word, let God's people add amen. Wow. Grace and peace to you, friends, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I bring you greetings from the 49 churches that are the Presbytery of Shenango. I say 49, we could almost say 50 for Mother Fair, Westminster College, may as well be one of our congregations in the sense of how grateful we are for over the years, the ways this college has supported our churches, the way Jim has been such a steward of his uh, membership in the Presbytery. So we're grateful here to be with you tonight. And I am honored to introduce our preacher and to welcome her to the bounds of our presbytery. Larissa was elected by the 221st General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church USA, met in Detroit last summer, elected as our vice moderator. She is a teaching elder. She is a member of the New York City Presbytery. And she currently serves as the Director of Church Relations for the Princeton Theological Seminary. Indeed, we have some Princeton alums in the midst here. And so I'm sure they, we, give thanks for your ministry there. Previously, however, she has been a pastor. Uh, first at the Lakeview Presbyterian Church in Chicago, serving as an associate there, and then prior to coming to Princeton, the first Presbyterian Church of Forest Hills in Queens, New York, serving them as a pastor, a multicultural, multi-ethnic congregation. Larissa is a native of New Jersey. She was educated at Rutgers and also at Princeton. And she is a spouse and a mother of a four-year-old. And after 18 months as our vice moderator, which has included at least once a month traveling around the church and bringing greetings, no doubt after that long season, she has become a friend to many, including us, we pray as well. So will you join me in welcoming Larissa to Shenango Presbytery and to Westminster College? Welcome. And Larissa, if I may, before you bring us a word from scripture, may I pray and ask the Lord's blessings be upon you. Let's pray in silence, and then I'd like to offer a prayer of St. Augustine. O thou, full of compassion, we commit and commend ourselves unto thee, in whom we are, and live and know. Be thou the goal of our pilgrimage, and our rest by the way. Let our souls take refuge from the crowding turmoil of worldly thoughts, always beneath the shadow of thy wings. Let our hearts, these seas of restless waves, let them at last find peace in thee, O God, and in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome. Thank you. Well, good evening. Are you all awake? Good evening. <laughs> it's wonderful to be with all of you, and I bring you greetings um, from the 221st General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church USA, and if you have absolutely no idea what that means, that's okay. Um, it's an assembly that gathers every other year. Um, a commissioners, almost 700 from across the country that represent all of our um, presbyteries in the nation, and then also mission co-workers, ecumenical partners, um, young adult delegates who come and dedicate a week to discerning God's will for our denomination and making decisions um, on behalf of the General Assembly. And then they, in addition to me, um, serve as representatives and ambassadors of the Assembly until the next um, General Assembly. So this has been one of the joys and uh, greatest privileges of my life. And I'm really excited to be with all of you this evening. This is um, the fun stuff I get to do. Um, to come and worship with folks from across the church. Uh, so thank you for having me, and thank you to the Presbytery and to the college for being just such wonderful hosts um, for me in my time here. So before I start, or as I start, um, I want us to play a little game. 
Um, some of you may have played this game before with a different name, but I like to call it this or that. Um, and so what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to move around. Um, and I'm going to give you two different categories. And you're going to have to decide whether you're this or that. And you cannot stand in the middle. And there's always going to be somebody who's going to want to stand in the middle. And the rule is you can't. Okay? So um, if you all could stand, if you're able. And here we go. So we'll start with an easy one. Let's see. Are you this winter or that summer? And you got to move over to the side that you feel more drawn to. Winter or summer? Summer people than winter people. Okay, are you this hamburger or that cheeseburger? <laughs> wow, there's a lot of cheeseburger people over here. Okay, are you this? A tablet, and I'm not going to say brand, so I'm just going to say a tablet, or that, paper. Tablet or paper. Like an iPad or Surface. paper people than I thought there would be. <laughs> okay, are you, let's see, are you this sneakers or that sandals? Takeout or delivery, whatever you want to say it, or that you like to cook yourself. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anybody have a burning question you want to know about your fellow worshippers tonight? Are you this movie theater or that watching a movie at home? Movie theater. Alright, last question. Was this game this easy or that hard? Easy or hard? <laughs> the peer pressure. So for those of you who said it's easy, what was easy about this game? You only had to pick one or two things. What was hard about it for you guys? Not to put you on the spot. Um, yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't want to stand in the middle sometimes. Yeah. Okay. You all can have a seat. So one of the things that I've learned about the church as I've traveled around the denomination, um, and especially if you all don't know um, that much about Presbyterians, or if you do, a lot of people like to say that we're decently and in order. We like to vote for things, so we bring people together and we debate, and then we vote, um, and then whatever we vote is kind of what we bring forward as an action. 
Um, if you've never been to a Presbytery meeting or watched General Assembly, the U.S. government is actually founded on the Presbyterian form of governance. So, um, for better or for worse, as a denomination, that's how we make decisions. And um, one of the things I think I've found as I've traveled around the church is that we're really good at deciding if we're this or if we're that. Or if the person sitting next to us in the pew in the Presbytery meeting is this way or if they're that way. Can I persuade this person on this side of something to come to my side and be on this side and vice versa? And it's so interesting to me because um, as I travel around, that's not all of who we are. I visited this church in... Um, Ohio Bethel Murdoch Presbyterian Church that's 200 years old um, and they were celebrating their anniversary. They just got indoor plumbing like seven years ago in the church. Um, but the way that they raise the funds for their congregation um, is the way that we often hear in the denomination is like not possible to do anymore. They have ice cream socials in their summer. Um, and they have three of them. They make 15 different flavors. In fact, last year in their budget, they used a good chunk of their budget to buy a huge freezer for their basement so that they could keep all of that ice cream full. What I love about the Bethel Murdoch Presbyterian Church um, out in Loveland, Ohio, is that they're known for these kinds of community celebrations that bring people together from all across their community, people who know them for these car shows, these quilt shows, and these ice cream socials. Or there's another church that I went to in Winter Haven, Florida, which is where Legoland is, if any of you have ever been. Um, and they had an interim pastor, and in the one year that the interim pastor was there, they welcomed 52 members into their congregation. They had a youth group of five, and then all of a sudden with the interim pastor, they now have a youth group of 25 youth that come and actually talk to their friends about church. So the youth are modeling what it means um, to evangelize to people around them, even before their parents and their grandparents are doing it. Or I think of my own church in Forest Hills before I started at Princeton Seminary. Or when I came back from General Assembly, the two big issues that everyone thought that we just spent all of our time talking about, um, and they came back and they said, oh, pastor, don't you think it's just horrible? Or pastor, don't you think it's just wonderful? But they didn't want to talk to one another about their differing perspectives. And I thought, no, no, we, we can't do that. We could end up dividing our congregation. And after a lot of discernment and conversation with one another, we realize, no, we should engage in these conversations. We should have these tough, hard conversations. And as we did, we realized it made us a stronger, better community. The passage that you all just heard read is one of my favorite uh, passages in scripture, if a pastor is supposed to have a favorite. Um, I don't know if we're supposed to, but uh, I do. And one of the things that I love about this passage is the way that the Syrophoenician woman engages with Jesus. So this woman is of Greek origin. This is somebody who Jesus would have never encountered. This is someone who um, would have never considered encountering Jesus as a Jewish man. You notice the passage started by saying that Jesus left that place and went there because he didn't want anybody to find him. So he was actually in hiding from the people. And this woman comes and knocks on the door and falls at his feet and asks him for help. Now here's what I think is so amazing about this story. When Jesus asks him for help, does anybody remember what he says? Does he help her? No. Yeah. He doesn't help her. In fact, I saw some head shaking back there. In fact, he calls her a dog. He said, let the children eat all they want, for it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dog. So calling somebody a dog is kind of equivalent to a word that I probably shouldn't say in this chapel this evening, but I'm sure you can imagine 
um, what that word must be. And so he just pushes her aside. This is not the Jesus that we often talk about in class or in Sunday school. And so let's, do you have the next verse? Let's go to the next verse. And she says, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. So she takes the exact words that Jesus uses to criticize her, to call her a name, and says, yeah, but even we dogs get to eat the crumbs. In that moment, what we see in the next part of the story is all of a sudden Jesus responds to her and says, for this answer, for this reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. This is what relationship with Christ, what relationship with God looks like. A two-way relationship. This woman was able to push and challenge Jesus in a way, and he said, for such an answer, you can go. Your daughter has been healed. I think a lot of times as I travel around the church, we're in this interesting time where the church is kind of having an identity crisis. We're not really quite sure who we are or what we're doing. A lot of times I hear from people that what we need is we need young people. Like, where are the young people? You all are going to be the ones who are going to save the church. We don't quite know who we are. But in order to know who we are, in order to change the structures and the ways that we do things, we need to know who we are. We need to be reminded whose we are as we seek to respond to God's call and to serve out into our communities. So I want to show you this video. And I want you to watch it and tell me what the problem is that they're trying to solve. live their lives. I'm born to dance. Want me to work like a dog in a full-time job? Ha <laughs> ha. I'm born to dance. Don't wear no coat, no tie, no shirt, and even no pants. I'm born to dance. You're shaking your head, but I'll be shaking my ass, cuz I'm born to dance. I want to shake it and shake it and shake it, shake it and shake it, girl. Do you want to shake it? I want to shake it and shake it and shake it, shake it and shake it, yo. Watch me dance now. I promise I'm not trying to sell you a car. I forget how I found that, but what I love about this commercial um, is the idea of how community started to save lives. You see the statistic that, or the percentage, that 81% more people stopped at the traffic light. Um, and what was cool about it, I think, is that people were involved in it. People who had never met one another were involved in stopping people at this traffic light and engaging them. To me, that's what it means to be the church. The way that we live community, the way that we can stop one another in our tracks, the way that we provide safety for one another. You know, um, almost a year ago to this day, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, and it was the scariest thing that I have ever encountered in my life. 
And a couple months ago, I went to my doctor, um, and they put me on this drug. And she said, okay, well, um, we're going to put you on this drug for the next five to ten years of your life. Um, and it can increase your chances of having these three other kinds of cancer. Um, it can also affect your vision, um, and you might start having hot flashes. And I just stopped, and I laughed right in her face. <laughs> and I couldn't stop laughing. And she said to me, are you okay? And I said, oh, I just, I just think that what you told me is just funny. And so then I went to the eye doctor. I happen to have an eye appointment later on in the week. And my eye doctor said to me, he looked at my medicine, and he said, oh, I see you're on this drug. Did you know that it can affect your eyesight? And I said, oh, yeah, my, my oncologist told me that it could affect my vision. And he goes, oh, that's like the least of your worries. And then he started to list off all these other things. And so I said, oh, well, you know, doctor, should I come in if my vision starts to get blurry? What should I do? And he said, oh, if your vision starts to get blurry, it's too late. Probably didn't have the best so bedside manner <laughs> of a doctor. But one of the things I realized is that cancer is all about measured risk. It's about taking drugs and medicines at just the right amount in my body that kill the same cells that give your body life. And so I went through chemotherapy. I had surgery. I'll still have to have another surgery. But to me, as crazy as it seems, that was the easy stuff. The harder stuff was trying to figure out, how do I live now? How do I live knowing that this memory and this moment that I'm having with my family might be the exact thing that sustains me a year from now, or five years from now, or ten years from now, if I need it again, because I get sick again? How do I even live? And it was at that moment, at that precise moment, as I'm still doing my job and traveling around as vice moderator, that I realized the power of what it means to be in a faith community. That when I couldn't get myself to go to church, when I couldn't pray, I knew that there were people all across the country who had never met me before, who were praying for me. People who were teaching me what it meant to live again and to live again. When I played this same game with uh, children at the Fairmount Presbyterian Church in Ohio, I had one kid who defiantly stood in the middle, every single option I gave her. And she just crossed her arms and looked at me. I'm sure her parents were mortified that the, she wasn't doing what the guest pastor was telling her to do. And so at one point I said, oh, just have fun, like pick cheeseburger or hamburger, or pick pizza or tacos. And she just stood there with her arms crossed and she said, I'm not doing that. I like them both. The whole game. And as the worship service went on, I thought, yes, that's exactly what we're called to do as people of faith and what we're called to do as communities of faith. To say, no, I'm not going to choose one side or the other. I'm not going to make other people choose one side or the other. I'm going to stand here in the middle and hold both and all of it for everyone. So let's pray. Gracious God, we live in a world of fear and terror and anxiety. We live in a world of uncertainty. And so it can be easy to seek this or that, to go one way or another, to feel as though we have to choose. And so, oh God, in those moments, may you remind us what it means to be in relationship with you. That like the Syrophoenician woman, we can push boundaries. We can be reminded of whose we are so that as we go out into the world, we can better serve you. Pray all of this in your name. Amen. Thank you so much for your words. 
like to take a moment, um, <clears throat> spend some time in prayer. Following service, if you would like to stick around and ask questions of Larissa, you're invited to do that. And uh, just gather up here in the front after the postlude, and she'll stick around as well. And we'll have uh, just the conversation that you would like. But at this point, let us gather in prayer. Lord God, as we think this evening about what it means to stand in the middle with you and to realize that you care for people that are different from us, people who make decisions different from us, people who have different interests than we do, different desires, we're reminded that your love So we ask that you would gather with us in this space and and touch our lives in such a way that we might see the world through your eyes. That we might realize that the crumbs that are under the table are there for us as well, just as they are for others. Lord, on this night, we think about the events of this weekend in Kalamazoo, and we pray for many in that community that we do not know, we'll never meet uh, those that uh, their lives have been turned upside down. And so we pray for healing. We pray for you to work through doctors and nurses as they reach out and I care for those who have been We pray asking that you would be with those family members who have lost loved ones. Provide care for them and nourishment as they seek somehow to be cared for. We pray, Lord, that you would give us the strength that we need, as they need strength as well, to be enriched in life that comes from you. We pray that you would give us the courage that we need to go forth into your world sharing the good news that we have been taught, realizing that there's not always a this and a that, that there's a place for us. And so Lord, we thank you for the words that we have heard this evening through the spoken word, the reading of your scriptures, the music of this night. We thank you that you have blessed us with your presence, blessed us during our time of worship, and we pray that you will go with us as we go into the week ahead to face the challenges of study, the challenges of exams or papers, opportunities that will come our way to perhaps speak to those who are in need of love and care. So be with us, O oh Lord, as we travel forth into this week, knowing that we are not alone. We ask all of this in your Son's name, Lord, as we pray together the prayer that he taught his followers to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our as we forgive those who and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Friends, one more time, let's, uh, let's give a word of thanks, uh, show our expression of thanks to Larissa uh, for her being here with us this evening. She's going to offer the benediction. The choir is going to bless us as we leave with a wonderful selection. And then any of you that would like to stick around and meet her or ask questions, if you all will move to the front um, after, the bene after the postlude, then we will enjoy some time of conversation. So please do stick around. Um, I'd love to meet all of you. And like I said, it's one of the uh, things that I enjoy most about being vice moderator is getting to meet folks who are serving the church. Um, I showed you all that video, and the other reason I show that video is because sometimes I think we forget that in the church we're supposed to have fun. And it's supposed to bring us joy. And that joy bring God, brings God joy. And so as you go from this place, as we prepare to leave this place, may you remember to serve God with a joyful heart. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore.